Hey everyone, this is Zan, and welcome to Dominion 6 at a glance. Today we're going to be talking about Femini, the Sage Queens. To summarize, they are a research-oriented nation with consistent access to strong astral, fire, and glamour magic. With a few exceptions, they have an awful unit roster of humans with okay secrets. They may struggle the first few turns, but can come back strong with a large research advantage. To summarize those units, the Lady Knight is great, but fairly resource intensive in the early game. The Lady at Arms is fairly average compared to other he heavy infantry of the age. And the Veiled One is okay as far as sacreds go, but definitely needs help in a bless. Also, worth noting that the City Guard can conform okay once you have access to a lot of powerful buffs to keep them alive and help them actually land some hits. For their commander summary, they have fairly average leadership, with the Lady Commander having good leadership and the Sage Queen having good leadership. Everyone else is kind of okay. However, they do have inexpensive researchers in the Femini Savant, and divinely inspired researchers that can be recruited outside of forts in the Femini Abbess and the Cloistered Lady. Worth noting that the Cloistered Lady is only one recruitment point and the Abbess is two. All of their mages can communion as they all have access to astral magic. And finally, they have a reliable battle mage in the Femini Sorceress. Although they are expensive, they recruit quickly in a fort and have good paths to just send out and cast effective spells. Worth noting that they also have Veil Army, which lowers the amount of units your opponent can see that you're running around with. I did actually forget to talk about the summon, so let me do that now using this mod found in the workshop that will show the summons on the creative protection screen made by Sturm. So the Femini Sage Queens do actually have access to the Grigory of earlier ages of Hinnom and Ind, although it is very hard to reach the level to cast this. You need, I think, Blood 8, a lot of Blood Slaves, and it's a very late game thing you will rarely see. But if you do get them or have the opportunity to, they are very damn strong, and I would highly recommend doing so. More commonly, you won't see them, and you'll instead see these various animal summons, which are not particularly gem efficient. The Illyrians, which are... You, you get two of these for a summon, and it's a fairly cheap summon, but you can only have two of them. I think it's worth it. I think they're pretty good for their cost. And then the ones you're going to see the most, or I believe you should see the most, are going to be the king and giants of the Lost Tribes. The kings essentially are non-sacred Adons, who are heretics, but they have fairly good paths and they can function as a super combatant, a unit that can likely beat up entire armies on its own. And then each time you summon a king of the Lost Tribe, you actually get 15 of the giants of the Lost Tribes. And these guys are essentially the Rephite warriors of Hanom, but they are not sacred, do not eat your population, and do not cause unrest. Femini spell recommendations are going to be those mostly accessible by their Femini Sorceress. So we're going to talk about Blur, Body Ethereal, Gift of Splendor, Luck, Visions of Death as a single target nuke. And as you notice, most of these happen to be buffs to your troops, mostly to help them stay alive and protect your backline mages. So Visions of Death, Astral Fires are going to be some of the spells that you use to actually kill units, especially early on. As the game progresses and you get access to Deceive Decree, which is going to summon your giants, all of a sudden these unit buffs are being placed on very, very powerful units, and that's going to actually help you win a lot of fights that way. For the Pretender design of Femini, I'll actually give you two samples of what you might use. And for the most part, I'm going to recommend that you stick to either some sort of scales, especially production scales in the early game, or an Awake Expander. I also very strongly recommend uh, taking Magic 3 because research is a quintessential part of the nation. So here I have two Expander designs that you could potentially use. The Busted Lion is the Golden Lion, and I personally think that for its price it's too strong, but that's another story. It'll expand fairly well. You don't need to take on aging on it like I did. You can alternatively take a Fire Shield, or some other minor bless that still allows you to have good scales. The Myrmicolian is a more traditional expander that was used a lot in Dominions 5. It does have a component where it eats your population, but you're in the late age and you have growth too. 
So it's not really too as impactful as you might think it is. Alternatively, you have the option for scales expanders or scale pretenders. And they can come in a few flavors. You can have an imprisoned bless. You can have something wacky. Here, I just chose something basic, either in the flavor of in immobile, which will unlock you blood later on, or a site searcher who can go ahead and site search all your provinces for you if you haven't already. The most important thing of these scale pretenders, though, is that you're going to have a higher dominion score, letting you use more divinely inspired researchers per province. And you're going to have scales strong enough to get you out of the early game, uh, hopefully using the feminine knights or some of the lady at arms. They also provide a bless that is not too powerful, but also lets you use your veiled ones in early fights, early expansion, and just gets you out the gate. And finally, Feminine's gameplay. Their early gameplay really revolves around expanding somehow. Either really strong scales in your capital, an expander monster, just something to get you going out of the gate because of how awful your regular unit roster is. In the early game, I now recommend putting cheap temples in your capital circle, similar to Piconier, just because this is going to let you foreign recruit these divinely inspired researchers and help get your research going. Note that you can only have as many researchers of these divinely inspired researchers per province as your Dominion Candles and your Dominion Strength. So do keep that in mind. Outside of that, I do recommend getting the Femini Sorceress. This is your two recruitment point. You can get one per turn out of your forts. Uh, I, I recommend using that mage in your early fights just to give you a little leg up on your opponents who may have a better unit roster than you. As you transition to the mid game, I recommend now starting to build many forts everywhere you can because you have a very strong mage that is slow to recruit but can recruit anywhere in the lore of mistress. This is going to help you access new magic that you otherwise wouldn't have that's outside of your fire, fire astral glamour focus. In a pinch you can still recruit the feminine sorceress because they only take one turn per fort. I also recommend try as soon as you can to start summoning the giants in Thaumaturgy 6. Trade for Glamour Gems if you need to. And I normally tell people to site search 2 to a level of 2 in every province just to be efficient. But for this nation, I do recommend using your capital only mage to site search Glamour 3 everywhere you can because you do desperately need those gems. Finally, in the late game, I highly recommend trying to control the Gates of Horn and Ivory for even more Glamour Gems, which will get you more Giants, and then using your Astral Magic to try and control Globals as best you can, prevent any bad ones from affecting you, or keep your own strong ones out. Leverage your high research in battles. You should be one of the first nations hitting Alteration 9, Evocation 9, whatever it is. So do use that to have an advantage over your opponents. And finally, as always with human-sized nations, beware remote attacks like flames from the sky. Thankfully, your primary mages can all cast you know, protection from fire, protection from cold. You do have to script it, and that will help alleviate some of the commander losses from something like flames from the sky or a murdering winter. But it's cumbersome to have to script something like protection from fire in your limited script slots, and it still might not work. Also, a little trick that this nation does get is that your feminine sorceress does have a passive veil army that reduces how large your army looks. So your opponents might not see it as a threat worth casting flames from the sky on until they're already attacking their provinces. And that ends our glance at Femini, the Sage Queens. Please do me the favor. And leave in the comments below, what do you think of this video versus the Piconia video in terms of how it's formatted? Because I do understand that this video ended up being a little bit longer just because I went more in depth in certain areas. I also went ahead and tried to add some edited footage or screens here and there. So also let me know what you think of those because they are pretty time sensitive to make, but I think they look nice. And one more thing, if you don't mind, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, the like button just to show me that, okay, these are the kind of videos you want me to be making for you guys. Anyways, I hope to see you guys next time where I'll be talking about Andromania.